I'm back with the moose, Julian Spence, the great man, the 214 marathoner man, and of course, the 2019 World Championship marathoner. But more importantly, we're here to talk shoes. Julian Spence, the moose, he is the coach of Ali Pashley, who is about to embark on her marathon debut, sorry, Olympic debut in the Mar- Women's Marathon on August 7th. Um, and she is absolutely flying. So we can touch on Ali a bit more. We've got some shoe talk to talk in. We're talking shoes. How are you, Moosey? Good, mate. Thanks for having me back. Oh, mate, we love the moose. Just the energy he exudes. How's Ali going? Uh, so good. She's she's right now. Ten, nine days left of the race. So uh, starting to get nervous energy going and, and doesn't have the the training load to kind of get rid of it. So getting a bit antsy, but that's that's the way you want to be right now. It is, mate. It's a perfect way to go into the race. Like not mm-hmm. overcooked, not undercooked, just absolutely perfect. Um, and I've got no doubt you got the recipe right, legend. Tell us about shoes. So Moosey is also the owner of the running company Ballarat Online Shop. I get all my gear from the Moose online. So tell us about the shoes you got going on. And look, obviously, the, all and sundry are watching this, so it could be all different foot types. Give yep. us a couple of demos. This will be a semi-regular thing every six to eight weeks anyway. So you don't have to talk for hours. Just just go through some some shoes. You yeah, got cool. So, yeah, like you said, Rig, everyone's different. Every foot shape's different. But what I thought is like a lot of people have been seeing and they will see these new kind of super shoes come out. Uh, a lot of people in fun runs, park run are starting to wear them. You'll see them on Conor McGregor warming up for his bout. LeBron James walked into the um, Lakers game wearing them. Uh, but you'll see a lot in the marathon in at the Olympics. Uh, even the triathlon, there was tons out there. So you might be wondering if these can work for you, someone that might not be right up the pointy end. And the answer is yes, they can. So there's even some stuff to say that someone sort of more towards the mid to back of the pack, they might get even more benefit than someone up front wearing the shoes. Uh, the, the key things about the shoes that make them fast, they have these, what, what I call a magic foam. So all the different brands now, they got these foams that return more energy than they used to. So they're super bouncy and responsive. So you feel like you get a little bit more uh, love back from the ground, every foot strike. They also have plates in them, carbon plates. The carbon plates help to stiffen the shoe up and propel you forwards. If we just use this magic foam without a plate, we would just we would feel real sloppy underfoot. So they use a plate um, to stiffen the shoe up and kind of give you that lever forward. And the other thing is they're really light too, and they've got cushion. So the, the light um, helps you to be more efficient, helps with running economy, and the cushion level helps you wear them longer. So in the past 10, 20 years ago, everyone would look for the lightest shoe possible for a racing shoe. But what was happening is towards the end of the race, they'd be so beat up because they got no protection that it would, uh, it, would, it would create like soreness, sore calves, beat up quads, and your time, like your ability to run faster at the end would, would be um, removed. So now you feel good at the end of your races. And it, this amount of cushion, it helps someone who is maybe out there for three, four hours uh, rather than just someone who's running two hour marathons. Great point on the super shoes and the economy is prolonged as well, which obviously used to really dissipate towards an end of a marathon for anyone from two and a half hours and up. So that that's awesome. Uh, really good, succinctly put. So I guess the super shoes, that could be a whole other shoe uh, topic, sorry, but yep. what's the latest super shoe in the where you've got in stock, about to come in stock, and then you can go through a couple of different fe- foot tops? Yeah, the all like every brand's trying to get some shoes in for the Olympics. They try to uh, time it so that like there's a lot of, attention on the marathoners and everyone will bring a shoe out so new balance are about to release their they're not allowed to call it tokyo like because they don't sponsor it i think asics the only brand allowed to say they've got a tokyo shoe um but new balance have one out the rc elite v2 that's the shoe alley will be wearing and that's uh that should drop maybe next week week after really cushioned probably the softest of the bunch maybe a little bit better for someone not um quite up on their forefoot as much and then Nike have their Alpha Fly and Vapor Fly out. So these two are like, I guess, the most popular in the in the market right now. The Alpha Fly is more cushioned. It's a little broader and it's more stable. So it's a shoe I think that's probably a bit suited to someone maybe back in the pack versus the Vapor Fly, which is a narrower cut, less stable, but a lighter feeling shoe. Yeah, uh, so, yeah. The Vapor is very, very, very popular. Um, yeah. But yeah, the Alpha, that's a great point. A really good point um, about the guys that might be running four, four and a half hours. Um, and massive margin for improvement with the Alpha Fly. So you mm. you guys have got obviously the Alpha and the Vapor, the, the Tokyo, 
model um, yeah. and colors coming in. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah they call it raw, rawdacious pack. Um, <laughs> white, pink, bit of vault. Uh, they've, they've like the tick or the swoosh on the Nikes is, is, is almost blurred like a cartoon. Uh, I'm not sure how that relates to Japan. This is run, but... running shoe porn, Moosey. Yeah, mate, they're good. I love them. And they, this, you'll see the spikes come out too. So all the, the spikes, Nike, what they tend to do is they have a colorway that covers every athlete in the Olympics. So like the baseball cleats will be the same color as the 100 meter sprinter and the soccer the soccer cleats will be the same, and um, even the skateboarders had had a, had a certain shoe this year. So I know cool. I did notice the skateboarding shoes. I love it, yeah. and Nike do it very well. Ellie feeling good in those. Has she had a prototype yet that she's been able to do any sessions in? She they've actually released these already. They yeah. just didn't release many. Yeah. So she's been running in this um, for a while. I, she hasn't run a marathon in this yet, but she's run uh, the 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 one in Hobart, run the bridge. Yep. And she's done all her workouts in it. So she's awesome. pretty, pretty confident. Uh, yeah, it's a softer shoe than, than what she's used to. New Balance brought one out at the start. It was firmer, a little more traditional. So she feels like this is sort of a little bit more on par with the other brands. That's great, mate. And it gives you that give. Um, all right, we, we'll do, I reckon we'll do a whole next show on the super shoes and faster shoes because I reckon we can go all day. Yeah. Take us through different foot types. You're watching this right now. You might be new to running, not new to running, but maybe starting running or doing a 10K fun run in the next few weeks. Take us in all different foot types. And we hear so much different stuff, Moose. Um, mm. you, you're really good at succincting in the tangible data for the guys. So go for your life on your best models at the moment. Yeah, look, best models, everyone, the, the key with this one is everyone likes different things. So what you love, Rick, is different to what I love. So I might have up there a 10 out of 10 shoe for me and you put it on and go, this is shit, I don't like this. <laughs> and you'll give it a two out of 10. But I, how about I go through, I say, these are the important things to look for in a shoe. So you, chuck a, you, you put a shoe on, your foot needs to be able to splay. There shouldn't be any pressure around the sides of your forefoot. You should have ample room at the toe. I don't want like anything pressing on the toe. If you can stand up and there's already like pressure on the big toe or the second toe, whatever your longest toe is, that's too close because if you go downhill, that pressure will accumulate over like half an hour, an hour. And all of a sudden you'll start clawing your toes back and that changes the function of your foot because you're not really, you're not being able to splay properly and we want a foot display. So the fit of the shoe is the most important thing. Um, and, and that's where, like, if you, if you do have a broader foot, a shoe like the New Balance 880, in, they do a really good wider width option. Uh, it's really stable. It's, it's a neutral shoe, but it is a stable. It's, it's quite cushioned as well. Um, the Brooks Ghost, also a wider shoe in, well, it comes in different widths, but we like the, um, the wide for someone who is a little bit sort of more volume in their foot. Yeah. That's awesome, buddy. Um, narrow, narrow foot for, I guess, um, more of a stability shoe for a narrow foot. Yeah. New one out called the Kayano Light from um, ASICS. So this is a new school way to support the foot, not heavy anymore. Some people that used to have to require a support shoe they used to have to wear clunky big like 400 um, grammars yeah exactly the old brooks beast or even like the old asics kayano was a bit clunky uh, a lot of shoe underfoot but the new kayano light controls the foot but in a different way in a more natural manner it's got a full ground contact outer sole so it's a lot smoother than the, the past support shoes uh, it, new balance vongo as well that's another one that competes with the the kayano light uh, a lot softer and a lot more love underfoot for those that need support than, than what they used to get. So for those that need support, that might be like training for a marathon or whatever for their two hour, two and a half hour Sunday runs um, that need support still. That's a, that's a fantastic, uh, those two models are great. Yeah. Yeah. They're good. Um, I mean, they're a softer shoe now. So a lot of people are having trouble after trying a real soft shoe going back to the firmness underfoot. And so now there's, there's, there's soft shoe options like right from the support category, the neutral category, even the racing shoes are soft now. Mm -hmm. Even trail shoes are getting softer. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's hard work being in a firm shoe. Like a, there are a couple of people that still crave that, like um, oh, I guess real like down to earth type feel, but not me. I like a soft shoe. Yeah, there's, there's not as many around. And you definitely feel it when you go back to an old racing flat or something mm -hmm. really firm you definitely feel the difference um yep. so yeah that's awesome buddy is there any i guess for people that are still in the really new in training age within six months to three years of, of running journeys 
um, anything else they should be looking out for in the, in the short term? Yeah, this it's probably a good chance not to get caught up in like, uh, I guess, trends, it, it, like not jump on the latest trend, whereas we saw it happen probably 10 years ago, maybe less than that, where there was a barefoot minimal trend that came out and we saw a lot of people like chucking their shoes away and then wear... The Vibrams. The, yeah, yeah, you had a pair. I know you Oh, shit. I, <laughs> I know you had a pair. I poo-pooed that shit off. Mate, <laughs> I promise you, I never looked at them. All right, good. Well, some people loved them and they got bone, heaps of bone stress injuries in their feet and a lot of Achilles stuff, plantar fasciitis, all this. But, and, and it's the same sort of thing now with like maximal shoes. A lot of people trending towards the massive hawkers and, and they're kind of thinking that's going to solve all their dramas and, and, and not get them injured. I know Nike brought out a shoe that they called like the, the injury proof shoe or um, we, they've got a goal to never to, to basically keep runners totally injury free forever. Uh, but this is marketing stuff and shoes can only do so much. So it's important to sort of, uh, I guess, find something that's really comfortable for you. That's sort of safe for you rather than just jump on every trend as it comes along. Sound, sound advice from the shoe guru. This man's forgotten more about shoes than I've ever known. I reckon he's had more pairs of shoes and we've all had hot dinners, the moose. Um, what are you running? What are you running this morning, buddy? Oh, mate, got the jab last night. So I was up shivering all night. Oh, so I, did, I didn't know that <laughs> off camera too. No, no, we got, I've got to run later actually. Yeah. Uh, and I, it's so weird. I start thinking about what shoe I'm going to wear like the day before I even run. I'm like, where am I going to run? How's my foot feeling? Uh, what pace am I going to go? And then I start to try to line the shoe up. So I've been it's not thinking- abnormal. No, nah, I'm actually going to wear a pair. I've got some um, calf dramas at the moment, so I'm going to wear a big pair of Hocker Stinsons. The trails here are so chopped up and wet at the moment that they've got like tread on them, so I can I can go some spots that maybe a, a road shoe would struggle with. Nah. Yeah. How is the trails of Anglesey? Just the nice. Oh, they're, they're wet, always, mate. Always they're wet. wet. <laughs> they're wet at the moment, but there's some great dirt roads around here, and yeah. the dirt roads are the, the go right now. The trails are a little gross, but. Yeah, there's out the back towards Bambra, Aries Inlet, Mogs Creek is just like, it's like a runner's wonderland. Genuine God's country. And you've got mm -hmm. on your left or right, depends on which way you're going, you've got the, obviously the, the beautiful water wherever you run. So it is one of the great places to run. Um, yeah. Moose, thanks so much. We'll, we'll definitely be catching up every six to eight weeks, mate. All the best for Ali Pashley Olympics. Um, any last words for all us, all these legends watching? Uh, I have fun. I don't know. That's not bad. You, you give, Mate, us, give us, give us, give us your last Ted Whitten top speech to Ali. What, what, what would you oh, do? Oh, gee, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'll put him that. on. I'll put him on the spot. No, no, not to Ali. Just, just to me. I'm about to go out from the ten thousand at the games. What are, we, what are you going to say to me? You're going out for the ten thousand. All right. Um, oh, gee, back yourself. Whatever decision you make during the race, back it. Be confident in it, and then we know we're all behind you. It doesn't matter what you come. It doesn't matter what you come tomorrow, Rick. Because it, we love you. That is, and I love you, Moose. That is fucking perfect. Thanks, mate. You're a champion. Uh, we'll hear from Moose in six to eight weeks. Thanks, brother. Cheers, Rick.